everyone, my name is Jacqueline Burkpile and I am the editor for EWTN's Church Pop, the English edition. I am here with John Reese Davis, known for his role as the dwarf in Gimli the Dwarf Gimli <laughs> in Lord of the Rings. I <laughs> an everyday story of a heroic dwarf leading a band of misfits and recreants to discover and destroy the ring that binds us all. <laughs> and mm. most recently, I am Patrick. And uh, the, yes. The movie explores the true story of the life of St. Patrick. Ah, uh, I am Patrick. I am a sinner. The least worthy of all men. Yes, Patrick is... Um, first of all, this is a really really, really good uh, drama documentary. Uh, I think you will enjoy it just as a, just as a film. Um, but it really covers the life of, of someone we, we refer to constantly, oh, it's Happy St. Patrick's Day and this sort of thing. St. Patrick's Day was anything but a happy one. Uh, and he is the most extraordinary man. I always like to, to josh my, my Irish friends by, by reminding them that, in fact, their patron saint is actually a Welshman. Actually, he was a Romano Briton, probably from an area that we would consider to be Wales. Um, but it's uh, his, you know, in some ways, he's the most accessible saint. Uh, you know, of of that period. It's the only individual sort of early Dark Ages voice that we hear of that is so personal and magnetic. It's a fascinating world. It's an incredible world. And what an extraordinary man he was. And so brave. Just so brave. I love him. Why do you think this movie is so important for viewers to see? Because it's the life of St. Patrick, and what makes it different from other other movies that have portrayed St. Patrick? I can't remember that many that have, to be honest with you. Um, what I like about this is I think uh, the... the, the uh, the, the, the writer, producer, director has, uh, you know, Patrick has come alive to him and, and he has made Patrick come alive to us. I only appear on the film as the older Patrick. Um, the, the youngest and the middle-aged Patrick are born by finer actors than me, but I just take the credit for it all because I do the the voiceover as well, you see. So I'm cheating, and I'm happy to cheat. Uh, <laughs> ah, ah. But Patrick, uh, Patrick is a little bit special. His humility is absolutely genuine. The least worthy of men, and that's genuine. But what is extraordinary about him is his... Yeah, I mean, you might, you might even... All right, let's be... be uh, your, your faith is particularly good at, at, at argument and, 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 and wrestling with facts to establish the truth. Let me, let me put it in a way that I'm happy to dispute and be defeated in the argument. There's almost an arrogance to his profound religious certainty. He knows that God is talking to him. He knows that the Holy Spirit is instructing him what to do. Uh, and it guides him all his life. From the time that, you know, he is he is stolen, he is enslaved, he is, I mean, 
basically broken and beaten up and then sent to work uh, as a shepherd, a solitary shepherd, you know, on, uh, in, in a wilderness, essentially, that offers him no comfort at all. He's, he's freezing to death. He has no real, uh, he has really no place to live. Uh, and and his whole plan, he, he, God is talking to him, the Holy Spirit is talking to him, but his plan is to get away, to escape, and he gets back to his people, those, those decent Romano-Britons who have a civilization and a culture and a faith, a religious faith. And he can live a decent life there. But it's almost as if there's a bit of Stockholm Syndrome in him as well. Because he has been abducted, he in a way feels that he has to go back and, and convert his persecutors. He's, it's just remarkable. It's just remarkable. So, and that in, that individual self-questioning, authentic voice that comes through in him is well. If you're not touched by it, uh, I suppose it means that uh, you know that that you're not interested in in, in human achievement and in in those remarkable people that that changed the world. So how do you, how did it affect you personally playing this role? Well, uh, I am a man and that which pertains to humans concerns me. That's a bad translation, isn't it? Of homo sum humani mina me puto. Um, but I find as I get older, there's there's been a change in me, I think brought about by going to fan conventions, to be honest with you. When I was a young man, I don't think I liked people that much. The more the older I get, the more and more they delight me. And and studying a Patrick and and the actor's privilege is so great, isn't it? That you can actually play in your you can become in your imagination a marvelous character like this. I mean, the character informs us as we inform the character. Uh, what did I gain from it? I don't, I have certainly not become a saint, let me tell you. <laughs> but I glory in his humanity and, and envy his strengths and courage and moral certainty, I think. Did, do you think it impacted you in terms of faith at all? Uh, look, I, I, I find this difficult to explain. I count myself a rationalist and a skeptic. Um, I mean, I, 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 I'm technically a Christian in the sense that I, you know, I was baptized Henry John Davis in, in a little Welsh Congregationalist chapel in Wales. I grew up in, in schools that were Christian. Uh, I have attended an awful lot of services and actually I have certainly a better uh, a better understanding of, of, of the Bible and a, a better reading of the Bible 
than many of my contemporaries. And it is not that I do not believe in God, uh, uh, but I've come to him in a slightly different way. The, the, the more I understand about the size of the universe, uh, the immensity of it, and the possibility that it may be one of not just not 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 a, a number of multiverses, but the number is is used to be one to the five hundredth power. Uh, it's now thought to be one to the thousandth power to the ten thousandth power. I mean, when you start, when you have that much space and time, then not only is God probable, God is a racing certainty. I'm convinced that, I mean, if you can believe in in a Boltzmann brain, the idea that uh, that out of quantum froth, you know, an entire Volkswagen van can come into existence and blink out of existence. And Boltzmann postulated that, it, you know, something like that would happen. Then, then an entire intelligence itself could emerge and vanish. But if you had enough space and enough time, an entire intelligence could stabilize itself. And even that isn't really the answer. The truth of the matter is, is that there are genuine questions that are real questions and not self-serving. I mean, serving some specious argument. I mean, why should anything exist uh, is a real question. Um, and I, I do not believe that science will ever find an adequate answer for that. In the end, because of the size of its all, Science drives us to metaphysics, I think. But then I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. And, and, and I'm happy to be confuted by better minds. Um, so I think that the real argument is what is the nature of God? Uh, and that's uh, that does interest me greatly um, and of the portrayals of God it seems to me that some of the mystics have got it right about the The, the size of God um, and the, the mystery of, of that. The Sufi, some of the Buddhists, um, Paul, St. Paul, um, I love Paul. I think, I think that Chris analytical mind is just. I, I, I love to see. I love to see minds exploring what is real, what, what is certain, uh, and what is valuable to. The human spirit. Uh, and, and, and the tradition of Christianity, it seems to me, is a wholly worthy one. Well, not wholly worthy, but it's, it's high spots. Transcend, I think, the high spots of any other civilization that we know. Western, European, 
Christian civilization has given us all the things that we really value. The right of free speech, the right of free uh, of, of, of free thought, um, the right to question. Uh, the, the sense of, because there is an equality of men before God, there ought to be a, an equality of men before the law. And your tradition, which comes from Mars, your tradition comes from the Bill of Rights and, and, and Hades Corpus and stuff like that. This is the backbone of, of your constitution. But were these things to be utterly dismissed, the abiding glory of Western European, and I emphasize this, Christian civilization is the abolition of slavery. No other civilization uh, tried it or achieved it. It is one of the glories of mankind. And it is inseparable from the Christian experience. Uh, I, I'm probably unique in your in your encounter with being. I, I grew up in Africa. I didn't know that. And I'm <laughs> one of the few people that can say to you, "I saw a slave ship." My father was a policeman in Tanganyika. He came home for lunch one day and took me down to the harbor in Dar es Salaam. And he said, you see that Dow there? That Arab Dow comes down from Saudi Arabia. It stops in Aden, and then it goes down the Somali coast uh, and, and stops in here, and then goes on to Baira in Mozambique. On the way down, it's got trading goods. But on the way back up, it's always got two or three little black boys. And they are slaves going back to Saudi Arabia to spend their life in slavery. And the United Nations will not allow me to do anything about it. And that impressed me deeply. Saudi Arabia did not officially end slavery until 10 years later, 1965. And it still goes on. Um, but... I felt my father's anger then, and uh, I share it. I share it still. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, I, 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 I'm afraid I, I cannot be counted amongst the, the saved or the chosen, um, but um, but I count myself one who acknowledges the importance of faith and Christianity. And by the way, the, 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 the great moral certainty of the Catholic faith in certain areas, which I think is a light still to human beings around the world. Um, but yes, civilization is worth defending, and Christian civilization must be defended. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very, very much. So, thank you so much for being a witness in this movie. So. Well, thank you, and and I urge your your auditors to. Uh, to 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 um to watch it. Um, it's good entertainment. Yeah, it was. And if it's not, is a very if it's good not entertainment, who cares about it? <laughs> no, no, nobody wants to see a movie to be lectured at or pray uh, yeah, or preached to. Patrick's life is an adventure story that gives us all uh, insight and delight, and it's exciting. Yes, it All is. Right. Thank you so much.
You take care. You too. Thank you.